So for those who don't know, Larney is, uh, they always talk about teams behind the team, and Larney's an important part of uh, the team behind the women's national team, uh, helping keep all those athletes healthy and uh, ready for the pool. Uh, today we're talking about common hip injuries, right? We know this is a thing that affects water polo players. So I guess you're the expert, I'm not the expert in this. So Larney, when you're when you're dealing with that, you know, with with your athletes, I guess what's the what's the most common hip issue that people come to you with that you have to talk to them and try and help them get through? Um, in regards to hip injuries, um, one that's uh, quite common is hip impingement or uh, femoral acetabular impingement, um, what they call it medically. Um, and that's basically when if you have the hip socket and hip joint and there's a lack of clearance of that, um, your femur or your leg bone to move within its socket, um, it creates a pinch or um, athletes uh, might experience um, just pain in the front side of their hip and their groin, um, a weakness, especially within uh, their egg beater uh, when they go into their breaststroke. Um, and so in the most extreme cases, um, you know, there might be uh, pain because of some structural issues. Um, there's something going on with uh, like a cartilage rim that's inside the hip joint itself called the labrum, or there might be some structural change of, of that hip socket. Um, but in, but it's also important to note that, you know, when you talk about water polo players and they've been playing since they're eight years old, that um, there's gonna, there could be some structural change in their joint itself, um, but not have any pain at all. So um, this, it's kind of make, making sure to look at it on an individual basis and um, trying to find out what the root cause is and then develop a plan in treating it. Hips are so important in the game. You mentioned the egg beater, right? It's the, it's the first thing you learn in water polo as you advance. It, it is something players do for hours every day. What's, what's the line between feeling like maybe you're just a little bit sore and then, and then maybe needing to talk to someone like yourself when it comes to trying to treat something in your hips. How do you know when it's, when it's to a point where it needs someone, someone else's help, I should say? Yeah, I think um, one thing I communicate with my athletes is um, looking at the, the frequency of their pain, um, you know, and learning about their history a little bit. So if, for example, we're doing a new movement um, in weights, or they're doing something new in dry land they haven't uh, done before um, and they're sore for two days and it goes away, um, that you can start kind of cutting things out that it's nothing that more serious. But um, I think for, in my communication them, is we kind of look for the red flag, how, um, what's impacting their performance. Um, can they not get as vertically high out of the water? Um, when do they feel it the most? Um, is it something that goes away and then comes back, or is it uh, particular movements that they do in the water? Um, but also in their daily living. Um, so understanding is this something that keeps them up at night, um, or um, is it something that kind of they feel for uh, a consistent pain? Um, and those are kind of those red flags of, okay, let's, let's make sure we're ruling everything out and it's just not a soreness and it's not um, versus anything structurally going on um, within the hip. Talking with Larney from the USA uh, Women's National Team here, uh, talking about com common hip injuries, but then also just getting into some of your other questions here. So feel free to kind of add them uh, when you're thinking about things you might want to ask it, you know, an, an athletic trainer, someone that works with the women's national team. Uh, we get a, We get a good question here early on and one that I was just going to ask, but uh, what, are your, what are your favorite or best prehab or rehab exercises for hips? Um, my favorite prehab exercises, um, I like using, um, well, there's two things, things that I do with them, which is assisted, and then their own self-care. So things that are assisted um, that they do with me is I'll, I'll do a lot of uh, mulligan joint mobilizations where I'll work on that. Um, 
um, within that hip joint. Um, from there, I'll go into some exercises. So it might be as simple as a um, like a half kneeling halo where they have to balance on one knee um, while rotating a kettlebell over their head. Um, and at the same time, I'm certainly mindful. I mean, our athletes put so much, so many hours in the water and in the weight room. Um, my balance is always um, how much, how much do we do? Um, and certainly that point is where we don't create any further aggravation and we're not really repeating movements. We're working on those fine movements, um, specific movements that they may not do and working within ranges they might not get and creating some strength in those new ranges that we get from working in the soft tissue or doing joint mobilization. Um, With, you know, we talk about flexibility in your, in your hips and I think uh, goalies are always some of the most flexible players in the pool, just given that they have to range side to side as far as their hips, their legs, they use their legs so explosively. But uh, for some of the other, other athletes, people talk about yoga a lot. Is there, is there some other thing they can be doing if they don't have access to someone like you or they can't get to their pool? What can they be doing now to kind of work on that flexibility? For sure. Um, I think yoga is a, a great um, tool that we have, um, but also being mindful that not all moves are made for everyone. Sure. Um, and uh, to, to make sure that it's safe for one and um, being patient with themselves in engaging their range um, of motion and new ranges of motion because it's, it's not all going to happen through one sitting um, and it takes consistency. And so um, things that we talk about with our athletes is, you know, your consistency is going to create that success. So the time that you're going to be able to commit to improving your hip range of motion, um, that's where you're going to see the benefits of the work that you're putting in. And um, so dedicating that time um, to do yoga. And it's for us, we, we sit in pigeon a lot. We'll sit in frog poses. Um, downward dog, um, but we're also maybe do some joint mobilizations um, or self joint mobilizations in which we might add a band to that movement um, uh, just um, to help improve their range of motion if they're limited in that range of motion. Um, so I think, I think yoga is great. Um, again, just to stress, to be patient with yourself. Um, to be consistent with it and allow yourself the patience and the grace to take the time to, to do that um, also. We're talking with Larnie uh, from the USA Women's National Team, taking some of your questions here. If you have any that you know you want to ask, we're obviously talking about common common hip injuries, but Larnie covers a number of topics uh, and, and issues with the Women's National Team. Um, I'll, I'll throw in another here while we look for some others to come along, but uh, something that you're often doing with the women's team before a game starts, before they're about to jump in the pool and you're getting them ready on dry land, how important is that whole routine and and what are some of the key things that go on in it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, our pregame warm-up is, is important. Just for one, um, it helps the athletes get mentally prepared um, for the water. And so... Um, everyone's warm-up is mentally different um, in how they prepare, um, but our routine stays generally the same. And so for us, we'll, we'll hit all body parts um, from the low back um, into stretching um, the hips, so the quads, the hip flexors, the glutes, and then move into stretching the shoulders. Um, from the stretching part, we'll go into – um, activation part. So we'll activate the hips, activate the shoulders, um, and then that final part um, before they head into the locker room is we'll get their heart rate up. So that's more um, everyone's up on their feet, um, going into a, a dynamic stretching routine, and then um, uh, finish off with a couple of buildups um, um, in the end. Dylan asks, what's a, what's a good pregame warm-up? And you were just running through some of that. Um, I'm, I'm going to refer to that question because we have a lot of people that watch this that 
will play multiple games in a day. They don't have the luxury of getting to a game an hour before it starts. So maybe they're in a van with their team and they're getting there. They have a couple of minutes before the game begins or they're stuck in traffic and they're just showing up to a club practice. What are, you know, if you're, if you're short on time, five, ten minutes before your game starts, what are the must-haves when you're talking about getting warmed up for a game? What are the things you need to focus on if you have a short window? Yeah, I mean, when you have those back-to-back -back games, you think about how much time you have in between. And so um, making sure you get that hydration in and a little bit of rest in there, too, um, is important and whatever feeling that you need. And then before you hop in the water is just to, to hit those main parts. Um, it might be, and this is where the understanding of what your body needs and the awareness of what your body needs. And so um, thinking about uh, hitting the shoulders and then the hips um, um, would be key things to hit before you hit the water. Um, I mean, warming up the shoulders for sure. Um, if you are playing um, long minutes um, in you know, you might not need an activation more so than a really good shoulder stretch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's understanding, too, what your body needs um, and the awareness of, well, if it feels tight, let's go ahead and stretch it, for one. Um, but if you felt kind of weak in the water and um, always kind of, um, well, if your shoulders feel tired, and that might be a sign that, um, there's certain muscles in your back, like your scapular stabilizers that are in the back aren't really doing its job. Um, so um, those are muscles that need to be activated um, so your shoulder doesn't have to work so hard. Um, and that's just kind of when I think about the hips in that same way is um, it reminds me of when athletes come back from playing overseas or more so from college or they haven't done the egg beater in a while or we've had like a two or three break that you know they start com might complain of some inside knee pain and so that inside knee pain may not mean that there's an injury to the knee it might more so mean that there's something happening on their hips or they don't have their range of motion um, to get out as wide and their their knees are working super hard um, to grab the water where the hips are such are a lot bigger muscles to do the job. Um, so um, when I think about that, it's just um, one awareness of, of your own body. Um, and, you know, I, I think hitting the hips and the shoulders are good. Um, and the recovery that you need in between games. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything um, really extravagant. I always think simple is best, and it might just be. Uh, just, you know, shoulder internal, external rotations of your shoulder and then hitting a nice, good uh, pigeon stretch into a groin stretch because you know those are the ranges that your hips are going to be in while you're in the water. Getting some good questions coming in now. Uh, and, and this is some of the stuff you've been talking about. But Tristan asks, how would you encourage younger athletes think age group to be serious and consistent in their mobility warm-up exercises? I think that's always a little bit of a challenge, um, but also such a, um, I used to work uh, with a lot of age group. I taught for nine years in a middle school and in a high school. And so um, challenging, but also an impact, impactful age group to be able to educate them um, on that and I think um, for them is just how do we teach good habits and um, I for I've had this conversation where I'll, where I'll ask well what do you put in your water polo bag what are the things that you put in your water polo bag you want to make sure you have your goggles you want to make sure you have your swimsuit um, you want to make sure you have uh, a water bottle and um, a pre and post game snack um, um, and then everything else to kind of in developing that habit of well what are you going to put in your water polo bag um, and having those staples in your water polo bag 
can eventually grow into something more of like, okay, now I'm going to um, have a shoulder band in there. I'm going to have a lacrosse band. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, to be honest with you, I think it happens that growth and those habits still happen with our athletes too. Um, so I think it's um, uh, certainly the choices that people make and what they're going to put in their bag and you know, the learning of what your body is going to need. Um, but I think there's certainly staples in, in growing as an athlete um, that your body is going to ask of you and to be consistent with it again is going to help you be successful. Jack asks, and you talked about dry land warm-ups. How long should a dry land warm-up be? Well, it depends. Um, sometimes we, <laughs> ours is about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, uh, for um, I, I always kind of think, well, well, it depends on what's happening in the water that, that day or what they're going to be doing in weights and how um, uh, – how we're going to, um, what is our, the, the focus is going to be. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be that difficult because um, keeping it really simple to let's hit the shoulders, let's hit the hips, and let's get our heart rate up. Um, mm -hmm. And when I say hit the shoulders, hit the hips, that's also that's encompassing of an activation, uh, a mobility uh, for hips and shoulders, and then a way of getting your heart rate up. And there's a wide variety of ways to do that. Um, and so that can be as short as, um, uh, you know, 10 minutes. Um, sometimes we're getting in a rush and so we kind of cut out what we, uh, certain things um, and hit what our needs are. Uh, Zach Likes Fishing wants to know, what is a good exercise to strengthen your wrist, especially when it comes to shooting the ball? Um, I brought this back. This is kind of an old school thing, but it's a, a wrist roller. <laughs> it's a, you can make one at home. Okay. Um, you just take a take a dowel, a rope, put. Um, I don't want to say a bucket because that could be too heavy, but something you can hang on it, and you just kind of go into a wrist roller and strengthen up your wrist. Um, the thing with that is, um, I have our athletes do that is. Um, they'll hold it so far away from them. They're like, I don't, this is so fatiguing. They burn out so fast and just want to, I tell them to keep it close and isolate to the wrist. Um, the other thing is um, you could uh, uh, work on with like just the ball itself. Um, our athletes do this on their own and you've probably seen um, Maggie's post of just kind of working on her wrist strength with the ball. Um, against the wall. Um, uh, and the other thing that I like, and this is a lot for centers or maybe defenders, is just working on grip strength, um, overall grip strength. And that could be just a nice, I have, I have some of them um, carry some hand grippers in their car and they'll squeeze it in traffic or whatnot while they're driving and just kind of um, another, another adjunct to get some reps in. Um, during a during a downtime, even even when you're stuck on the 405, you can still be working out. Uh, this is this is true. <laughs> uh, Andrew asks, uh, what what sort of exercises do you recommend post workout? Post workout. So, um, if they're coming out of a weight a weight session and they're doing a really heavy set, um, we'll always have the athletes cool down on a spin bike, um, especially if they've been lifting heavy um, just to help circulate uh, some of that lactic acid in their body and then follow that up with a stretch. Um, if they're coming out of the water, stretching is a big thing. Um, it's a great time to do that, um, especially to gain and maximize the, the body, your increased body temperature. Um, so after training, I'll go through with some when I have treatment time with them, go through um, a lower leg stretch session um, as well as an upper body stretch session, and that's about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, 
after they get out of the water. Excellent. We're talking with Larnie here from the USA uh, Women's National Team. Let's see if we have any more questions here um, before we let you go. You know, as as we're talking, is is there something else that we that that is just it comes up all the time? You feel like you're always being asked about it that we might as well just talk about while you're here. Um. <laughs> I don't. I don't get asked too many questions. I. <laughs> All right. Well, may, well, maybe that's going to change. Uh, I'm not too busy visible. Yeah, that's okay. Well, now this is this is this is going to up your up your Q rating big time, Lonnie. So expect expect the followers and everything else to really really grow from this. Uh, I'm just I'm just scrolling back through to see if there's any other questions that kind of came came along. Uh, Kate Kate asked a question here as I'm going back, and um, and this is this is something we we've been addressing for the last three weeks, but People are, are in self-quarantine. They, they often do not have access to anything they normally would, right? So no pool, maybe not really much of any exercise equipment. What, what are some, you know, maybe some body weight things? We saw Chris Bates talk about last week, but some things they can do at home just to try and stay in shape when they don't have access to the things they normally do. Yeah, I mean, I think that stuff Chris, Chris is putting out is awesome, and um, body weight stuff is – is certainly um, it keeps it simple. Um, so when we talk about like stuff for the hip and shoulder, if you have like a towel or um, even the ability to contract your muscles, um, what we call an isometric contraction, is um, an exercise within itself. So um, like to be able to hold your shoulder blades back. Um, and even better yet, um, um, I forgot to share this, was just an awareness of your posture. Um, and, and when we think about the hip, um, how you're sitting, um, how, if you're standing, how you're shifting your weight, um, those are certain things to be aware of. But um, when we um, talk about body weight stuff, um, an isometric contraction of holding your shoulder blades back to be in a good posture, um, um, is one way to do that too. Um, you certainly don't need very much. Um, this is where the creative part mm -hmm. comes in too. Um, as as a clinician, even with the women's water polo team, um, you know when we don't have a certain piece of equipment. Again, keeping it simple, we have to be creative. And so you might use we might use if we don't have a stretch band, you might use a towel or even a doorway to create resistance. Um, um, or being in a, a plank is a great shoulder stabilizer um, exercise. Um, again, kind of knowing where your ranges are, um, being on your elbows, your hands makes a difference. So um, I don't know if that fully answers your question, but I think body weight is sure. um, is uh, just keeps it really simple. And then your creativity is the sky's the limit on that. So. Um, I think uh, people can create, come up with some really creative things. And, and then I think just one more question here before before we let you go. We thank you for uh, taking some time to talk with us here. But um, and and maybe this isn't a thing that you have to deal with often because you work with Olympians. They're some of the most self motivated people on earth, right? To, to do what they do. But especially now, self accountability is is more important than ever, right? You're not out of practice. You're on your own. You, re you really have to want to do it. Um, do, do you ever get those moments where you have to give someone a pep talk to kind of do what they're supposed to be doing and, and just some general thoughts on, on how to keep people motivated when it's, when it can be kind of an unmotivating time right now? Yeah, for sure. And especially in this time, um, I think um, it's important for me anyway, is to kind of know our athletes on, on, a, on a personal level and to know what, you know, know a bit of what they're going through and understand and have that empathy um and so um i've 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 certainly grown a bit to not say you have to do this you have to do that you need to do this you need to do that um that's just a, a recipe for resentment um i certainly have learned that um i'm working with them um and working with them and where they are. Um, so in that in that regard, um, 
I say, I can't want it more than you. And, um, and for them to get better and for them to do the right things and me being an advisor and a supporter um, of them through their journey and through this process is, um, is that they, uh, it's their time and their commitment to the time. Um, and uh, it sucks being hurt. Um, and so uh, I think that's, that's one, one thing. And um, with this whole particular situation, I think um, in light of it, it's the gift of time that they have. Um, as, a athletic, as athletic trainers, it's, we, we battle that on a daily basis um, to keep athletes in the water, uh, to help them perform at a high level on a daily basis. Um, and when you see certain, they start having ailments, is um, sometimes time is the, is the greatest gift. And so um, I think this is an advantageous time, certainly, that if there are ailments, excuse me, ailments being um, uh, worked with, that this is the time to do it. Um, Excellent, Larnie. Uh, you, you could you could tell you taught for ten years. That was a nice like positive, a little critical in the middle, and then end on positive with your with your feedback. <laughs> exactly the sandwich. No, but no, but it's so true. Uh, you know, nobody can want it more than the athlete. Right? They have to want it that bad. So, um, Larnie, thanks so much. Uh, always good to talk with you. Looking forward to seeing you in person at a pool uh, sometime soon, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And stay safe out there. You too. Thanks, Greg. All right. Take care. Larnie Bocaren, the sports medicine manager and the uh, women's athletic team trainer for Team USA Women's National Team. So every time you watch USA Women in Action, Larnie's behind the scenes helping keep all those athletes healthy. If you've watched any of Kaylee Gilchrist's uh, return from her injury in South Korea. Larnie's been with her quite literally every step of the way, helping her get back from a devastating injury to now being at Olympic uh, caliber when it comes to the sport of water polo. And uh, she's one of many out there, right? So, so big hats off to all the athletic trainers and doctors and folks that um, help help athletes get healthy. And I believe today's National Doctors Day or Medical Professionals Day. So while we're here, let's give a shout out to all the nurses and doctors and everyone in the medical community that is helping uh, so many people uh, fight this uh, coronavirus pandemic and, and keep people safe. They are on the front lines, um, really, really doing some some special work. So our thoughts are with all of them and their families uh, in what is a challenging time, to put it mildly. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining us here. Uh, hopefully this is valuable. People like Kara who are coming back from a hip injury, great to see that you got something out of this. Um, we'll have a lot more content on the way. Come back and join us tomorrow. Same time, uh, we'll talk with Lisa Diacono from Mount St. Mary's brand new 